Growing up, Eileen was always a very positive person. She always had big ideas, our own family. She was always coming up with ideas and plans for us and what we could do in terms of like getting people together. She just has always been a planner and a supporter. Um, in our adult lives, she basically came up with a lot of ideas for uh, mentoring programs, for different things to do with the council, and she always knew how to draw people to her. When we first met at a function at the uh, Board of Regents, Eileen was elected in the uh, latter part of the session in 2018, passionate in her community and giving service to her community. You know, she was one of the first uh, Hmong attorneys. There were not that many attorneys actually in the Asian Pacific communities at that time. And she just come across a very, very genuine, you know, very articulate, you know, very passionate about the community. I met Eileen over 20 years ago um, in 2000, August of 2000, as volunteers for an organization called New Chia, Hmong Women Achieving Together. Really, it was social change work. Um, it was recognizing that there was this issue in our community of um, violence against Hmong women and girls. And a uh, uh, cause for that was just the intergenerational conflict, gender role changes that occurred as Hmong transitioned to life in the United States. She was very, very concerned about the Asian youth, especially the Hmong women, especially. What Eileen brought to the table was genuine desire to do something about it. I think she made the whole community look at Hmong people's relationships to mainstream differently. I almost feel like when we first came to America, the Hmong people were kind of cloistered and we didn't really go outside of our comfort zones. We spent 10 years talking to Hmong men and families about ending sexism, about, you know, what is sexism? How do we stop it? Well, you know what, now we're gonna switch and we're just going to recognize Hmong women and develop them as leaders. So we changed our mission from ending sexism to actually creating social change, social, cultural, and institutional change to improve the lives of Hmong women. That year, we incorporated as a nonprofit, and uh, we also founded our Leadership Institute, which is still around today. We created so many great women out there. They're all out there now. Over almost 200 women who went through this institute. I think Eileen has always had big dreams for everyone. She could see the talent in someone and then help them see it in themselves. She's enabled so many dreams to come true just through her encouragement and her vision that she shares and models for others. But Eileen's dream was that the Hmong people would become a valued and respected part of the community. And that's exactly what happened. She's very humble and she's very strategic in how she um, expresses her opinions. Um, she's also comes from a place of empowerment and um, recognizing other people's strengths and their intelligence and their contributions. Eileen was a big uh, bridge builder. So she could see the challenges as well as the different perspectives and others. Uh, Eileen was a good listener. Uh, she was one who uh, uh, I think would, would try to reach out to people um, and, and listen to them before she commented. I think she really convinced me of the idea of partnerships. That's all you need. You just need, you know, two people who care about a thing and then other people join you. I recognize that, you know, as the Board of Regents, the 12 of us try to act as a team, we're not always going to see things the same. At the bottom line, uh, when, when the differences are all done, you have to come together and hope and work for each other's success. In this case, the success of the university. And Eileen was very, very good about coming together as that team. The thing I'll remember most about Eileen is her optimism. Eileen made every dream possible. She made big ideas seem achievable. You'll see how many groups she started, how many nonprofits she started, because she believed that unless you start, you will never get any place. And what, what really informed that passion and that energy was a desire to make a difference, a desire to improve the lives of refugees and people of color and students of color and women. I think Eileen is a hero to everyone. I don't 
consider her a Hmong hero. I consider her just a hero. I think a lot of women look at Eileen as someone who just, you know, embodies uh, empowerment, uh, feminist values, just knowing what she did and what she's accomplished is makes her role model. But it's also the, her connection to the community. And when I say community, everybody assumes it's the Hmong community. But she was looking out for St. Paul. She was looking out for citizens and she wanted to help everybody. What I learned from her, that if you see an issue, tackle it, take a small step. You know, you never know what that it might mushroom into. But it's important to, uh, to see the different communities, the different cultures, the different places that people come from that, uh, that are important to their lives and the making of who they are. Um, so from Eileen, I, I got to learn more certainly about the Hmong culture. I got to learn more about maybe St. Paul. What I think Eileen would want us all to take away from her story and her life is that we can all dream big. We can all make a change. She just wanted us all to live our potential and dream as big as possible. Find the connection, you know, build on those connections, help others, do things sincerely. That's exactly what she would do.